Hey, shalom. It's Doris Rubenstein. I'm a member of Beth Jacob, and I have written a book uh, that has won a nice award right here. That says it's really good. Uh, and the book is called The Journey of a Dollar. I don't know if you're seeing it uh, backwards or you're seeing it forward, but that's the name of the book. And the pictures in the book were drawn by my friend from summer camp, from the same kind of camp as Herzl Camp is, only in Michigan, Howard Fridson. So it was just a fun thing to do to write this book and have it illustrated by one of my oldest friends, because I'm old. Anyway, I thought I'd read this book to you today, and um, I, I may stop from time to time for you to answer some questions that appear uh, at, with each chapter. And if you're watching with a brother or a sister, with your parents or whoever, uh, you can talk about what your various answers uh, to those pictures. So I'm gonna start the book right now. The Journey of a Dollar by Doris Rubenstein. Okay. I'm gonna show you the pictures. What can I do for a dollar? Elliot asked his mother at breakfast one Saturday. Oh, you can download an app to play our game, his mother replied. No, that's not what I meant, Elliot said. I mean, what can I do to earn a dollar? Next page. Why do you need to earn a dollar, his mother asked. Elliot explained that his class was studying Ecuador. They wanted to help the poor children there. The teacher asked everyone to work to earn a dollar to send to Ecuador. Elliot's mother thought for a minute. What did she need to have done around the house that Elliot could do to earn a dollar? What kind of work was worth a dollar? How long should it take to do that work that would be worth a dollar? Next page. The sun was shining brightly that day. She would ask him to do something outside of the house. She thought of something that Elliot could do and be finished within 30 minutes. Elliot, there are weeds in my flower bed, she said. If you will pull the weeds for a half hour, I will pay you a dollar. Elliot liked helping his mother plant flowers every spring. They planted zinnias and cosmos with seeds. They took little seedlings of marigolds and impatience from small pots and replanted them in the ground. Elliot was always proud when the flowers grew and made their house look pretty. That's a great idea, he shouted and he ran out to get his garden tools. What's your favorite flower? Talk amongst yourselves. We're back. Chapter two. Elliot put on his gloves to keep his hands from getting too dirty. He used a cultivator to make the soil loose so that he could pull the weeds easily. And it was not easy to pull some of the weeds and others had prickly, prickly needles on them. He pulled a pile of weeds and threw them on the compost heap in a corner of the yard. Next page. When he finished, he showed his mother what he had done. She was very happy with his work and gave him a crisp new dollar. You made the garden more beautiful than ever, she told Elliot. He was very proud of doing a good job. And then she gave him two quarters. This is a tip for you for being such a good son and gardener. You did much more than I expected you to do. That night and the next night, Elliot slept with his dollar under his pillow and his two quarters in a jar on his dresser. Next page. 
On Monday morning, Elliot took the bus to school. He touched the pocket in his shirt every few minutes to make sure that the dollar was still there. He looked around and wondered how many of his classmates of the bus had earned money over the weekend and had a dollar in their pocket. What would you, you do to earn a dollar to give to someone in need? So what would you do? Talk among yourselves. Next page, chapter three. That afternoon, Elliot's mother came to school too. It was her turn to be a teacher's assistant. She came to Elliot's class. When the time came for the lesson on Ecuador, the teacher, Mr. Curran, asked each child to come to the front of the room with their dollar to tell what they had done to earn it. Latoya earned her dollar by walking her little sister in the stroller when her parents were painting the porch. Sophia earned her dollar by washing out the family's garbage cans and recycling bins. Each time a student told their story of earning money, they put the dollar in a big jar on Mr. Curran's desk. There's the jar, there's the jar. Next page. Oops. Here's the jar again with Elliot. When it was Elliot's turn, he told how he had pulled weeds in the hot sun. There are many poor children in Ecuador who will go work all day pulling weeds in the potato fields and cannot go to school, Mr. Curran told the class. Mr. Curran had lived in Ecuador many years before as a Peace Corps volunteer. Elliot said, I'm glad I, that I can help those children go to school with my dollar. And he proudly put it into the jar. His mother smiled. She was very proud of Elliot too. That night, when his mother came to tuck him in, Elliot said, I put my dollar in the jar at school today, but how is my dollar going to get to Ecuador to help the little children who can't go to school because they have to pull weeds in the potato fields? Elliot's mother smiled and looked at him with love. Close your eyes. There he is, closing his eyes. And I'll tell you the, about the journey that dollar is taking to Ecuador. Well, the dollar's traveling to Ecuador, and the question is, did you take a trip somewhere last summer? Hope you had fun, whatever you did. All right, next chapter, chapter four, here's Mr. Curran in the jar with all the kids. Chapter four. First, Elliot's mother asked him to name all the students in his class. <coughs> There's Sophia, Latoya, Abdi, and the twins, Ari and Ariana, Brooke and Hannah and Mac and Sadie, and Elliot went on until he had named all 23 children in his class, and me. So there are $24 in the jar, said Elliot's mothers. No, cried Elliot, opening his eyes. Mr. Kern gave a dollar too. There are $25. That's a lot of money for a little kid. It's a lot of money for me. I can do a lot with $25. Okay. Only a small picture on this page. The first thing that will happen is that Mr. Curran will take the $25 and put a rubber band around them. He will take the dollars to the school office so that he can write a letter, Elliot's mother said, and she was right. That, here's what Mr. Curran's letter said. Dear friends, these $25 are from my second grade class at McDowell Elementary School. We are studying Ecuador. We would like to help children in Ecuador to have a better life. Elliot's mother continued. 
he will sign the letter and write down the name of each child who gave a dollar. Then he will put the letter and money in a big envelope and send it to New York City. Oh my gosh. But I want my dollar to go to Ecuador, not New York City, said Elliot and opened his eyes wide. Be calm, his mother requested. In New York City, the dollars from your class will be delivered to a special charity group that helps children in Ecuador and other countries around the world. There, it will meet $25 from children in a school in California. It will meet $15 from children in a church Sunday school class from Tennessee. It will meet $35 that was sent by children in Michigan, Michigan, who put on a play for their neighbors over the summer to earn money. How much money is that, including the $25 from Elliot's class? Get out a piece of paper and pencil right now. Okay, we got $15 from California. Oh, excuse me, from Tennessee. $25 from California. $35 from Michigan. And $25 from Elliot and his friends. So how much is that? That's a hundred dollars. You're right. I bet you all got that right. All right. There we go. We're on to chapter five already. All right. So my dollar has gone from our house to my school and then to New York City. Elliot said with excitement. He had never been to New York City, but he had seen pictures of it in books and on television. With his eyes closed, he could see the tall buildings and the Statue of Liberty. He could see the door of an office in one of the buildings. He imagined his dollar sitting on a big desk in the charity's office in one of those tall buildings. Now, I think that's sort of silly that the dollar has legs and is literally sitting on the table. But, you know, that's the expression we have. A dollar is just sitting on the table. Who's on the dollar bill? It's George Washington. Okay. But how does my dollar go from New York to Ecuador, he asked. Elliot was anxious for his dollar to arrive in Ecuador safely. His mother said that the dollar now went from the charity's office into a big bank downtown. Elliot had been downtown with his mother to a big bank building. It had a very high ceiling and marble pillars at the doorway. At the In the bank, Elliot's mother continued, your dollars and the other $99 will get put into a special place with money that hundreds and hundreds of other people have given to the charity to help people in need. Elliot's eyes popped open. I bet there's a jillion dollars from that charity in that back. There's a jillion dollars. His mother laughed. Not quite, but there are many millions. Still, your dollar is very special. Elliot smiled and he's closed his eyes again. The next day, Elliot's mother explained, a person who works for the charity group in Ecuador will be able to use that money to help children who need it. She asked if Elliot remembered seeing his or her or his father write checks to pay bills. Sometimes too, they use the internet to pay bills with a credit card number. Of course, he said. Elliot knew that his parents put money in the bank or their credit union and then used the checks and debit cards instead of dollar bills to pay for things. His mother kissed him goodnight. As he drifted off to sleep, he pictured a woman who looked like his mother, only with red hair because Elliot liked red hair, carrying his dollar from the charity's office to a bank very much like the one downtown. Does your family have an account at a bank or a credit union? Do you have a bank account or a credit union account?
How much money do you have got in your account if you've got one? Hmm? Okay, chapter six. That morning at breakfast, Elliot had one more question. I don't understand something, Elliot told his mother. How does the charity lady in Ecuador get the money from the bank in New York? Good question, said his mother. The bank in New York has a branch, sort of a sister bank in Quito, the capital city of Ecuador. When the charity puts money in their New York account, another person who works for the charity in Ecuador can go to the sister bank called the branch in Ecuador. She can take out the money there to use for the school children. So the money goes in the bank in New York and out of the bank in Quito. Quito's a beautiful city. I've been there. All the mountains all around it. Not like Minnesota, that's for sure. Okay. A branch, Elliot whispered, and he closed his eyes while he chewed his toast. He pictured a big tree with a tall, wide trunk and many branches. There was no money on the trunk, but instead of leaves on the tree, there were dollar bills. So those green things that look like leaves on that tree are really dollar bills. Oh, he gasped, do they use dollars in Ecuador? I know they don't use them in England. Elliot's cousin studied in England and gave him some English money when she returned. Why, yes, they do use dollars in Ecuador, his mom said. Only a few countries outside of the United States use American dollars, and Ecuador is one of them. Elliot breathed easy now. His dollar was safely on its way to Ecuador, and it didn't have to travel on a jet or in a car when it might get lost or stolen. So Elliot's cousin uh, lived in England. Have have you, do you know what the capital of England is? I bet you do. I bet some of you might have actually been there. It's London. Okay, next. Oh, this is one of my favorite illustrations. Chapter seven. Elliot and his class continued to learn about Ecuador. They knew that it was in South America. They learned that Ecuador has a long coast along the Pacific Ocean. They learned that the Andes Mountain runs up and down the center of the country. And they learned about the wild tropical rainforest in the eastern part of the country. Elliot wrote a report on the toucan. This is the toucan. See that bird with the big bill? The Fruit Loops bird. Elliot wrote a report on the toucan. It's a bird with a large, colorful beak that lives in Ecuador. But he kept wondering where his dollar ended up. One day, just before school ended for the summer, Mr. Curran brought a letter to read to the class. It had a beautiful stamp on the envelope. The letter was from a woman in Ecuador who worked for the charity that received Elliot's dollar. Mr. Curran read the letter. It said that the money from Elliot's class went to the village of La Esperanza in the Andes Mountains of Ecuador. Mr. Curran took out the map of Ecuador that the class had used all year. He asked Jessica to come to the front to point to La Esperanza on a map. Now, I don't know if you have a map or a globe of the world handy in your, your, your house right now. It's awful fast. But when you get a chance, see if you can find a globe or a map or check on the internet and find out where Ecuador actually is. And see if you can find La Esperanza because La Esperanza is a real village in Ecuador. It's in the north, just to give you a tip. Okay, chapter eight. The letter said that their dollars were used to provide school supplies to a school in La Esperanza for grades one through three. The lady sent a picture of the school and the school children. On the back 
of the picture were the names of all the children. Thanks to each and every child in Mr. Curran's class who contributed a dollar to help the pupils, the lady wrote. There used to be no school new, near here, so children worked all day in the potato fields. Now there is a school and a teacher, but most parents are so poor they cannot pay for supplies like pencils or notebooks or crayons. I bet you have all those things. Okay. Elliot thought back about his dollar. What a journey it had made. It went from his house to his school to New York City, where it went to the office of the charity, to a big bank in New York, to a bank in Quito, and to a school in La Esperanza. Elliot sat back in his desk and closed his eyes. He could see a little boy sitting in a school desk in La Esperanza. The boy looked a lot like him and both of them were smiling. Will you join Elliot in helping people in need to have a better, happier life? How would you do that? Think about it. Would you help someone in your neighborhood, in your city? Would you help animals? Would you help the environment? Would you stop a disease? What kinds of things would you do to help someone in need and where? I think you'll have a lot of fun thinking about that. And maybe this summer, you and your friends or you and your family will do a project together and make a choice as to where to you want to send that money. I'm sure you'll feel very good about doing it. It's called Tzedakah. Lila Tove, good night.